Hello, everyone. I'm Greg Flamong for irishsportsdaily.com, and we are very happy to announce our new video series, The Joy Slot, covering Notre Dame women's basketball and men's basketball. And we're going to be ramping up our coverage of both of those sports, uh, very similar to what we do with football, right? So there's going to be game recaps. There's going to be analysis. Um, it's not going to be as frequent as uh, the football team. Um, it's probably going to be around once a week. If there's a big game or something like that, we might do some live shows, some live recaps like we do for the football team. Um, I just feel like it's time to really enhance our basketball coverage. And part of that is a new series that's going to be coming out uh, with Dar Dara Mabry, former Notre Dame women's basketball player. The show is going to be called Dimes with Dara. She's going to be uh, kind of the Jamie Uyama of this show. She's going to be providing the uh, basketball analysis. She's going to be providing her expertise in that area, and we're very excited to have Dara join us on that. And we're going to be, um, we're, we're very excited to have that as part of our coverage. So you're going to want to like our channel here. You're going to want to like the channel, subscribe to our show, subscribe to all of our content. It's going to be really good. It helps the, it helps you know, kind of get the get the content out there to the people, and that's going to help them out. And uh, before we get to Dara in our first episode of uh, Dimes with Dara, I do want to talk to you about some of our sponsors. One of which is esqclothing.com. Uh, which is founded by Notre Dame uh, alum Ga Wang, and he has created the world's first bamboo dress shirt. It's crafted from high-quality bamboo fabric. It's the softest and most comfortable shirt you'll ever put on. Not only more sustainable than cotton, but also feels cooler, has stretch, and is odor and wrinkle resistant, and it's even machine washable. You've seen ESQ's one-piece collar bamboo dress shirt on all of Notre Dame's top players and coaches, and it's the perfect shirt for today's business meeting or heading for a night out. Use ISD15 and get 15% off all online items. That's ISD15 for 15% off. And I also want to talk to you about VSR Media, which is founded by Notre Dame football pregame host and Emmy award-winning anchor, Vahid Saad Razade. VSR Media provides professional and cinematic video and photo. Whether you're looking for a collegiate or pro-level highlight reel, have a personal story to tell to tell or are aiming to diversify and grow your business. VSR Media specializes in short and long form video storytelling, social media management, and website design. VSR Media also captures professional headshots, senior and sports photos. Contact them at vsrmediacompany.com. Mention Irish Sports Daily to receive 20% off your first project. Visit them online or give them a call at 574-800-9106. All right, let's get to Dimes with Dara Mabry. All right, everyone, we are here with the first episode of Dimes with Dara. Dara Mabry is in the house, ready to provide some analysis, ready to provide her expertise, her knowledge, um, and her wit. And that, that's going to be a big part of the show. Dara, thank you for being here. I'm very excited to, uh, this is the first show. The, the, we're calling it the Joy Slot. The, uh, the, the, the segment is Dimes with Dara. Uh, we're we're going to be kicking off the, the basketball coverage. So thank you for being here. Um, how are you doing? How are things? How, how's, how is your knee? How, how's that all coming along? Of course, first of all, thank you uh, for having me. What better way to start off my week by talking women's basketball, um, especially about Notre Dame. Uh, but outside of that, I'm doing great. Uh, my knee is doing so much better than it was doing before. Um, I'm off the table now like and when I say that I mean I'm not necessarily going in there every day like on the table for rehab and like working mm -hmm. on mobility and stuff like that I'm in my um strengthening phase so I'm in the weight room every single day uh with our strength coach here Jarrett he's absolutely phenomenal uh he's been helping me so much um and we're just taking it day by day I've learned so much throughout the process and then outside of that um I'm getting into media broadcasting those kind of things. And hopefully there's some, some pretty good opportunities coming up for me. We got an opportunity right here. So yeah. that, that works out nicely for everybody. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to ask, maybe this is a dumb question, uh, but we, I've, I've talked to players, uh, some Notre Dame football players on this show, and they've been coming off of some, um, some knee injuries like yourself, some ACL injuries. And everyone talks about how hard the, uh, the rehab is. What makes it hard? Like what, what is, what is hard about it? I guess. I guess what's hard about rehab specifically is that you're going to have high days that are so high and you're going to yeah. have low days that you're like, Oh my gosh, I feel like I hit rock bottom. Um, but if like, if mentally, if you can learn to accept that, like even 
on my on my bad days, our trainer Ann would tell me your bad day still means that you're getting so much better. Mm-hmm. So like if you can kind of develop that mentality, it makes it easier. But that's what I would say about rehab is hard because you could be walking into anything and on Monday you'll feel amazing. And on Tuesday you'll feel like you took 10 steps backwards. But um, outside of that, I would say it's also just a remind, like when you have a, an injury, like a knee injury, an ankle injury, like yeah. something that is just there to remind you 24 seven, like, you can't move two inches on the table without being reminded that you have to really carefully lift your leg up. And any slight movement could be a ton of pain. It could be little pain. Everything varies. But I would say during rehab, it is that constant reminder. Um, and that also goes like for your everyday life. You're just being constantly reminded that you have a knee injury. It's the smallest things of just getting up and going to the bathroom. Like you're probably going to need someone to help you, like depending on where you yeah. are in your recovery. So yeah, it's, it's really tough. Um, and I have been over there talking with some of those guys, uh, like Kevin Bauman, me and him are close friends, Mm. both from New Jersey. Um, and he's gotten better mentally. Uh, but I've definitely been in there seeing the environment of injuries and it, it really takes tough people. Um, and these Notre Dame athletes, I have the utmost respect for them. Absolutely. Anybody, not just Notre Dame athletes that have gone through injuries and have come out on the other side. Yeah, I've never had like a knee injury like that. My main rehab things have always been like hamstrings. So like I've had uh, hamstrings are really tough too. They just yeah. Ham. I've as a track guy, like I had a lot of multiple hamstring injuries, like all over the place. And it's just it. It. it, it, I understand what you mean when you say um, you feel like you're you're, you take steps back because when it's a muscle, it's it's like you're you're afraid. You know is it ever going to work the way that it used to? And, you know, and and that's like a big thing. And I imagine it's the same thing for the knee. So um, look, I'm glad it's, it's going a lot better for you right now. Um, Obviously it's, it's a long road back there. And uh, so having covered that, let's, I I did a little bit of intro before, before we uh, popped on here. I just want to talk about the the coverage that we're going to be bringing to people. We we, we had talked about, um, we're going to be doing, we're going to be trying to do in game recaps, uh, some of them will be pre-recorded. Some of them will be uh, live shows, right? With, with some big matchups for the Notre Dame women's basketball team, the men's basketball team as well. We can talk about that. We'll be talking about uh, college basketball around the country, right? And the trends and what's going on there. Um, so I'm very excited, right? Like I, I feel like it's time to treat, um, you know, sports like we would, you know, the football program, right? Like obviously there's a ton of interest in the football program at Notre Dame, just kind of nationally, right? And that's where these shows get built. But I think that we can kind of build off that, right? Like Notre Dame, especially on the women's side, like they have one of the premier programs in the nation. And so I think they should have coverage that, uh, 100%. Yeah. that, that uh, yeah, that reflects that. We're here for um, it. We're excited. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Let's let's talk about uh, um, let's go over some of the bona fides for my uh, my co-hosts here, uh, Dara. So looking over some of your stuff, 135 games, 135 starts. That's I did not know that. Uh, tell me about <laughs> just like walking in. I'm I'm in the first five. Just walking in. And obviously, you probably you had to work for that right i don't think anything right. was given to you there but uh tell me what that is just like every time out you're you're in the first five how how does how does that uh how did that come about for you as, as a true freshman at virginia tech yeah uh there was like there was two sides of it so obviously there's the side where it's like obviously i'm out there in the first five which is great um and then there's also like you feel pressure in in a sense i would say that's more towards my freshman year so there yeah. was kind of a balance where like, okay, you have a really big responsibility, like as a freshman point guard, and there's some pressure that comes with that. And then on the flip side of it, it's like, you're also out there for a reason, you know? So my mm-hmm. freshman year was kind of just balancing, you know, learning things as a freshman point guard, especially in a conference as competitive as the ACC. Yeah. And then like just trusting, trusting myself. Um, and, and eventually that once, once you get game experience underneath your belt, like those press, that pressure and, that side of the ment- of the mental part like kind of goes away. Um, and then if if you look at, you know, starting in a new program, there's different kind of like um, things that happen with your mental. Like, okay, I'm leading a brand new group of people during a mm-hmm. pandemic yeah. in, in an empty gym. 
I'm the starting point guard, you know? So there's, I would say different, different mental barriers to it my sophomore year. But then again, it's like on the flip side of it, I was like, I'm playing at Notre Dame. I'm playing for Neil Ivy. Um, I'm surrounded by people that have known me since I was a little girl, essentially, um, which was really fun. And that kind of, they believed in me, not even like as a player, as a person, you know, like they watched me grow up. So they had the utmost belief in me. Um, Mm -hmm. So there was the flip side to that. Um, But I would just say at the end of the day, like I, I, I grew into this role of leadership where by the, by maybe midway through those, through the 135 game mark where I was starting, I completely let go of those mental barriers. And I was like, yeah. you're here for a reason. You're experienced. You're really smart. You have a great IQ um, and just make the most of it. Um, and that's why I had so much fun playing. Like I felt like I was a, a ball of energy out there. I loved the environment. I loved the spotlight and the people I was playing with. So I credit, you know, Virginia Tech and Notre Dame to both of those. And then, it's pretty amazing if you think about 135 games, no injuries at all, and then freaking blowing my knee out. Seeing yeah, me, yeah. It's just such a, a weird thing to finish off with, and I can smile about it now, um, but it's pretty cool. My journey was absolutely amazing, um, and I know it didn't finish the way I wanted it, but like when I look back, I, I really can't ask for anything better. Yeah, so, um, I mean, it, it, it says here in <laughs> your – it said in your uh, the 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 bio on the the UND website. Uh, so in <laughs> in 2022, started all 33 games, averaging 32.4 minutes, which is basically like you're coming out for four minutes. You know, four in the first half, four quick in the breather. second half, basically. Yeah, yeah, quick breather. You know, get some water. Yeah. Uh, it says here that the the team's leader and biggest talker on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> so. 100%. I. I go, what biggest talk what does that say what is what is that telling me talking just makes everything easier and like if you think about it like you have you have freshmen you have sophomores junior senior obviously top to bottom and then transfers you know like and Mm -hmm. if you think about it like the game of basketball is just a, a game of possessions and like you have to be you have to be i mean you won't be at it every single time but you have to try to be on your a game all the time and talking was just something that made it not only easier for me, but for my teammates, like, because I had a high IQ, I was in the right spot most of the time. Um, and it just, when you talk yourself through things, it makes things, it makes things easier. So I'm like, okay, I'm here. I'm in help. And then my teammates can trust like, okay, I know she's there. I can hear her, you know, um, and communicating. I mean, you can say that about life, life with communication is just so much easier. And imagine, imagine a basketball game, it's loud in the gym. There's a lot of things going on. You got two coaches screaming from both ends. Um, and sometimes it's out of whack. Like you really don't know what's going to happen. Like someone can mess up, but, but your voice could fix mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of, I bet, I, uh, I guess we're at, if Ashton wrote that, she would say biggest talker on the floor. And then what was the other part? Uh, was it uh, team, team, uh, team leader, team's leader. Yeah. yeah. Biggest talker I mean, on the floor. Was- that goes hand in hand. If you you have all different types of leaders, you could be leading by example. Um, but I was always a vocal leader. So let's talk about a little bit about leading by example. Five time All ACC Academic Team member. Good job by you. I'm sure the uh, <laughs> yeah mom and papa Mabry are very excited I'm about proud that. Of that one for sure. You should be. Uh, 38% <laughs> career three point shooter. 84% free throw shooter. 301 career threes. It, which is, I believe, twenty-seven more than any other Mabry in college ba- in college basketball. Um, yeah, I, I didn't want to lead with with the sisters, right? Because you're you're uh, you're your own person, but right, uh, two very accomplished sisters, also at the University of Notre Dame. Uh, is there bragging rights in the Mabry house about your uh, your three-point shooting? I was just going to say, my sisters would not. Well, Marina specifically would not hesitate to throw in that I had a fifth year. Um, but I mean, it's so cool. Like, as you can see, like one of my sister's jerseys is here and then Marina's is right over there. Yeah, and mine uh-huh. is, mine is in the works um, of getting put up on the other side. Cause I just got that from when I recently graduated. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a little bit of bragging rights, but at the same time we've, we're older now and we've settled down. Like we just can't believe that we all ended up playing at the same yeah. university 
custody. Marina wins a national championship. Michaela comes back as a coach and has the opportunity to coach me, her little sister. And then we, we go on to do these amazing things. And like, I think it's still, it still hasn't fully processed that we've definitely made history in a couple ways, I would assume. Yeah. Um, and if you look across the country, it's like, how many other situations turned out like that, like within a family, you know, which is yeah. just something so cool. Like, and it, it goes into that family environment. Like it just, I, I graduated now, but like, I feel like I'm surrounded by my family every single day. Um, and that goes like from my sister all the way to the end of the roster, you know? So just very grateful for our time here at Notre Dame and what we were able to do. Yeah. Like now that I have kids, I, I view everything through the lens of kind of like a parent and just for your situation specifically, I mean, it's, it's a, it's the dream. It's the dream it's for so any cool. parent yeah. to have your, yeah, your kids. Cause you, you know, when you're growing up, right. Like you, you, when you you have little children, you, you want them to, they go into a sport and you want them to, you, you don't know where it's going. And so right. for them, to, for it to end up the way it did uh, is a special, special thing. Uh, I would point out to uh, your sister, Marina, uh, I don't think LeBron James is apologizing for the number of games played, having scored the most points <laughs> in NBA history. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. I, I don't, I, I don't, I, I, that's, I, I, object, I reject that reasoning of the fifth year yeah. or whatever it may be. Uh, well, Marina's personality is that like, she is so competitive. She's so yeah. fiery. Um, so she just, I mean, that's the kind of player she was too. Like any opportunity she had to say something, to talk a little smack, she's going to do it no matter what. So I got a chance to see that uh, very up close. Last year, I, I had the opportunity to go to a, uh, a Sparks game. And uh, Dallas was in town. She was playing for Dallas. And uh, Ooh, I, 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 I can recall that game. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I, think she, I, think she hit, I think she hit five threes that day. Um, yes, she, she sure did. She, she, is, uh -huh. uh, she is very smooth stroke. Yeah, I mean there 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 was a there was a because so we we the opportunity we had we we were sitting on the baseline, right on the court, and so it was just like she would get the ball, um, and it's just like catching fire, like just no hesitation. Oh, yeah. So uh, yeah. yeah, so she you could just tell like she's a very fiery player and uh, a lot of a lot of talking, yeah, a lot of a lot of referee conversations, which I look I always enjoy right because I have a big like referees they're like my nemesis like i have a big problem yeah. every, every you know, team every team needs a little bit of that yeah yeah so look she's that and that's good um yeah. something else i wanted to talk to you about in your bio before we get into the uh the 2022 or 2023 2024 women's basketball team okay it says called sharpie on virginia tech when she iced the game with a dagger three with 312 remaining to keep the irish up double digit points Listen, I, I like to think that I'm a hip person. I don't know what called Sharpie means. I don't know what that reference is. Can you enlighten me? Unfortunately, I can't un enlighten you because I don't know what that means either. And that means I'm going to have to talk to someone. Because uh, maybe, maybe I should text Ashton right now. Yeah, maybe. Find out. maybe. I don't know. Called Sharpie. I was like, what, is that? what does that mean? Called, called Sharpie. Game? called game it says called sharpie that's what it says called sharpie interesting because until today i've never heard of that and if anyone is ends up watching this podcast in the comments please let us know if you've if you've ever heard of that because i think we're over two right now hit us up in the comments i don't know what called <laughs> sharpie means if anyone can enlighten us and while you're hitting us in the comments please subscribe to the show uh and please uh like this video uh, and that, that really helps, uh, get, get the word out and everything. Um, all right. So let's, let's go into the, uh, let, let's look at last year real quick, the 2022, 2023, uh, Notre Dame women's basketball team, uh, lost in the sweet 16 to Maryland. Obviously you go down in game 18, uh, with the knee, uh, Olivia miles goes down, uh, with, I, I think she played in a tw in 28th game, 10 games later, she goes down with the knee. Um, obviously putting a big uh, damper on Notre Dame's post game po postseason hopes. Um, it, it was, it was kind of difficult. And, and when I, I had a chance to talk to Neil as well about this, about how she had to change the team in the way that you were attacking teams, especially offensively um, you going down, you were a, a main three point threat uh, on, on the, on the roster, you and, and Sony in the, in the, you know, kind of in the regular rotation. 
but the team had an offensive rating of 37, 37th in the nation, defensive rating of 21st. Uh, 18th in field goal percentage. So I, I didn't bring this up to her on, on the show, but like that kind of goes to show like how she adjusted to the changing uh, dynamics of the roster. Like, especially when you went down, right. Um, Cause your three point, your three point attempts were like three, 330th nationally, which is like way behind like the way that um, the game is kind of trending overall, right? Like, you know, people want to, people want to be hitting threes or they want to be in the paint. Uh, shooting the ball there. So uh, very good field goal percentage for Notre Dame with, uh, with not, you know, they're getting, you're getting good shots there without, uh, without the three point attempts. Um, 192nd and three pointers made 11th in rebounding. So um, that was what Maddie Westbelt was a big part of that. Lauren Ebo was a big part of that. We're going to talk about her because she is someone who's departing the roster. Um, 118th in team pace. So um uh, bottom like in the top third but the, the bottom of the top third there nationally in pace how much did your injury and then um olivia's injury affect things from a the way that because the, the 18th game like your identity is set the way that your team wants to play is set um that's a big blow and then going into the tournament olivia going down like that um that's a, obviously a much bigger blow as well because you two uh, we're one of the leaders in usage, right? So usage is basically how much you two have the ball. So yeah. she was in the uh, the 22%, you were at 18%. So that's a big chunk of who Notre Dame wants to have the ball um, on a possession-to-possession -possession basis. How much did that affect your team, those girls going – or you you going down and then Olivia going down? Yeah, a lot. Um, obviously, it was pretty much tragic, super devastating. Yeah. But – collectively everybody in the program knew things are going to have to change. Other people are going to have to be comfortable. Like I talked about, I talked a lot with the team about this. Like when I got hurt, I said to a lot of them, you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable now. Mm -hmm. So whether Sonia had to bring up the ball, um, yeah. Maddie had to do a lot more. Everybody top to bottom had to do a lot more. Cass had to play more minutes as an early enrollee. Um, but I mean, Niel knew right away, like Niel, she had a balance between adjusting with the team and then also getting me and Olivia through awful knee injuries. And the way she did it was absolutely spectacular. So from, from a X's and O's, um, and like player personnel standpoint, uh, Sonia moved over to the one a little bit. Yeah. She knew that that was a great option. Sonia is extremely reliable in all categories. I mean, she checks off every box. Um, and then she knew Maddie was going to have to take more three-point attempts. Maddie's a great three-point shooter. Um, and then I go down. And then if you look at Olivia's three-point shooting from her first year to the year after, I mean, it was absolutely unbelievable. She People had to start going over the screen on her you can't go under yeah, yeah. her three-point shooting got a lot better so that's maddie and sonia sonia knew she needed to shoot more threes too um and then i mean it just started clicking like when olivia went down in that louisville game every i mean i bet you people shut the tv off people probably thought yeah. that we were that was it you know and then everybody steps up top to bottom sonia is draining step back threes at the end of the shot clock um, and you credit you credit Niel, the whole staff, the whole team. They adjusted really well. And then I would say another thing that we just we knew we were going to see consistently was people were going to play junk defenses on us, meaning that they were going to not guard some of our post players. They were going to yeah. literally sit at the arc below the basket, like the charge circle, um, and they were going to make you shoot it. You know, and then people adjusted. So KK, instead of settling for threes on that skip pass, make the help rotate. She'll take a step in and maybe she'll shoot a 15 footer instead. That's a higher percentage shot for her. So, I mean, with a young team, new pieces, two of your, your point guard, and then your leader getting hurt, it was a really big adjustment. Um, but I mean, they did a great job. We made it to the sweet 16 battling all that adversity. Yeah. We took a tough hit. Uh, when we lost to Maryland, but I mean, I don't think anybody expected us to be in that position, but because we believed we could, it didn't matter, you know, what yeah. anybody else thought. 
So I yeah, mean, no good. Go ahead. Yeah, no credit credit Niel. I mean, it was unbelievable what she was still able to do, and and all of us on the team. Yeah. Um, so a lot of that went on Sony, right? So Sonia yeah. Sonia Citron, who uh, like that. How how hard is that? Just to go from like off ball, you know, you're a main ball handler and then Olivia is a main ball handler. And then she has to like, how hard is that? Like just to just kind of like, okay, like you have to create for yourself. Cause she's, <laughs> she's a 40% three point shooter, right? Like she is the main option, like creating for yourself versus other people creating for you. Like how hard would that be for her? Um, so tough. Yeah. yeah. So, so just kind of go into yeah. that a little bit. And me and her had a ton of conversations um, throughout the postseason. Um, me and her were also like, we loved playing together. Uh, she was one of my best friends mm. off the court as well. Um, and Sonia is a lead by example kind of player, like what we were talking about before. Um, she was a leader on our team just because she she has a quiet personality. She remains yeah. neutrally balanced in everything she's doing, including on the court. Um, and she was a lead by example thrown into a role that you have to be vocal. You know, yeah. so like it it could be our first set doesn't work. And then there's 13, 13 seconds left on the shot clock. She has to she has to go get the ball being face guarded because we saw that a lot, too. She has mm -hmm. to go get the ball, call the play, get everybody in the right spot and probably score or make something happen. Yeah. Versus like Olivia or somebody else having to do that, um, which is something that's really tough. And she she had a great postseason um in that new role and i think it i think it sparked her confidence now because although we have some more ball handlers and point guards that came in she now knows okay i can i can do this you know mm -hmm. like she took over that louisville game uh to win the regular acc yeah. and like other times she she would have to not only mentally battle but physically battle because I remember we would play some teams that had like big rosters and they would just throw bodies at her. Like some people mm -hmm. would just come in the game and use a couple fouls on her. And I'm like, come on, come on. Like, but if anybody was gonna do it, like it was her. And she adjusted so well because she's mentally tough. Um, and she she like I'll keep saying it. She became comfortable being uncomfortable, and you have to credit her because this conference is so hard, and her point guard was so good. So there was those yeah. were like big shoes to fill regarding ball handling. Yeah, I feel like like of all the players, like when you said that, I was like, that is like Sony because like there are other yeah. players who have increased roles, right? right? So like if your role increases, then that's one thing. But at least it's your role. Like her role completely changed. Yeah. And like I always like I always think about like I remember when I was a young player playing. It's it's one thing to be a key part of a team and it's another thing to be the reason that your team is going to win. And right. that is like very mentally different, right? It's right. it's one thing to be like, you know what? I, I you always want to have a good game. You always want to play well, right? right? But if she goes you know, 4 for 12 one night it's like she can do other things to where it's like you're helping the team win, but like Olivia is going to pick her up and you're going to pick her up and Maddie's right. going to pick her up. And like the other parts of the team will pick her up and it's fine. When you are the person and you go four for 12, you're going to lose, yeah. you know, and that is like pressure. mentally that yeah. the pressure of that. Yeah. Like the responsibility, like you feel yeah. it towards your teammates. Totally um, agree. And it's like you go from it's, it's one thing from year to year. It's another thing from like, season to, like in the game like uh, it you know february this is my role in march this is my role and it's completely different um so that's that's very difficult to um yeah to kind of okay. handle for some players yeah okay. uh tell me about uh neil ivy and what she mm -hmm. how she has kind of grown like because because i was i was yeah. texting you before like she became uh like she became the head coach your first year at notre dame so you've seen her entire tenure um, and you're still around to see that. Tell me how she is different from when yeah. she first started uh, as the head coach of the women's basketball team. So you have to credit her because, I mean, she walked in her first year into the uh, pandemic. Yeah. So mm -hmm. while she was trying to build relationships and really, like, get, 
like set her foundation um, within the Ivy era, like there were so many barriers. Mm -hmm. So she wanted to have the team over for a team dinner. She can't do that. Um, you, we had COVID restrictions that were like, you can't have meetings longer than 15 minutes, that kind of thing. Um, so, I mean, credit her, her first year, she walked into, she knew some of the players that were still there uh, from when she was an assistant, but not, not a lot of them. Um, so she still had to, like I said before, build those, build those relationships, which was difficult. Um, and then her second year after that, we kind of, we kind of had a base like, okay, this is what we stand for. This is our team motto. We have six, um, team rules that or standards, whatever you want to call it that we stand by. They're engraved, uh, in our locker room. And she just, you, in the midst of those two years, like building her foundation, her standard always remained the same. And she always was going to coach with the utmost passion. She, you can tell how much she loves the game of basketball. Um, yeah, She's experienced. I mean, she was a great, great player, won the national championship, and then went on to coaching. So she's been in all areas of the industry, if that makes sense. Um, she mm -hmm. raised a phenomenal basketball player in Jaden. Um, so, I mean, just to see her grow, like even I, I was able to witness what she did when she was an assistant and she was, you know, my sister's position coaches and all that kind of stuff. So if, if you look at what she's done from the second she came here um, into her fourth year, I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, and then think about it. She replaced Muppet McGraw. Like those are really big shoes uh, to fill. And I know our athletic director and, the entire Notre Dame community, you, we didn't, we couldn't have picked a better person than Neo. Yeah. She seems to embrace it. Uh, she seems to have, I mean, it was like a tough go, like you said, like replacing Muffet, especially because not just that, but Muffet was very successful at the end, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, that's hard. It's one thing to replace quote unquote, a legend. It's another right. thing when you're replacing that legend after like a really good run, of like good seasons so yeah. that's that's difficult right like like the women they won the national championship in 2018 you know like that right and then so like she's kind of taking over a program that just like a year like two years prior would were right. national champions so that's very difficult as well um I, I think that's true just from the outside like it just seems like there's there's a uh a grace to that where like she has she's kind of taken on that um she <laughs> seems very comfortable as well yeah. which is good. Like she, and, and she understands the the challenge, right? Like when I spoke with her, it was just kind of like, you know, she didn't dwell on the fact that uh, there were key injuries last year. She acknowledged them, but she didn't, it was just like, Hey, like we we're here to win. Everyone knows what the standard is at this university. When you come to Notre Dame to play women's basketball, like, you know, like we're, we're after. Right. National and if here. you think about like her mentality towards that, if you look back in the previous years of the program, we had so much adversity with injury. Like yeah. when Lily Thompson went down, my sister Marina had to go play the one. And yeah. then they ended up winning the national championship. And then mm. Bree Turner had an ACL and Natalie Achama had an ACL. And we had small rosters, you know? And so mm. I think Niel soaked up everything within those years uh, from Coach McGraw and the staff and everything that they did. And that that's got to be part of the reason why throughout the adversity, she was still so successful. Yeah. So uh, she did a great job navigating that. Um, and now it seems to me, and you can, you can kind of give me your, just your, your bird's eye view on this, but it seems to me like this is, this is a roster that can, can compete um, oh, yeah. for a national championship in 2023, right. 2024. Uh, so some of the key losses that they are, are taking on, obviously yourself, right? So there's, there's, there's a leadership gap there, right? Like there's, there's don't have like Olivia is obviously an upperclassman now at the, at the right. one, uh, but she is not, she is not uh, yet healthy. She has not been cleared. Um, and when that's going to kind of happen is, is kind of up in the air. Uh, obviously Sony is going to use the, the experience that she, that she uh, kind of gathered last year. And she's going to bring that on this year to take more of a leadership role there. Um, Lauren Ebo leaves um, and she was part of the, the the front line with with Maddie West well Westfeld that is um one of the better rebounding teams in the nation so that's going to be tough uh, Notre Dame brings in uh, Emma Rich uh, sharp shooter that was, 
I was telling uh, Neil on the thing, 30 points in a quarter. Now, now listen, is it still eight minute quarters in high school? It was when I played. I don't, I don't know what it is now. Yeah, I think it is eight. Yeah, it probably yeah. is eight minute quarter. That's insane. 30 points in eight minute quarter, nine threes. Um, that that's that's shooting that's shooting hot flames is what that is. Um, yes. So she she's uh she's coming in Hannah Hidalgo. Uh, we're gonna talk a lot about her in just one mm-hmm. second. Uh, Anna DeWolf, uh, grad transfer, and Becky o- Obinma. Did I get that right? Do you know if that's Obinma. correct? Yeah. Obinma? Yeah. So mm-hmm. she's she's coming in as well. Um. So let's get your just bird's eye, thirty thousand foot view of this this season and what's coming up. What's going to be a strength and what do you see as something that the team has to kind of work through um, early on in the year? Um, Okay. So many different pieces from top to bottom. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But still at the same time returning that, that core group um, from last year. Uh, Gosh, where do I start? Newcomers. Okay. We talked about, I mean, Emma, she, she can, she can, I'm, for lack of better words right now, um, my New Jersey was about to come out. Um, she can shoot the ball extremely well. <laughs> I was going to say she can shoot the blank out of the ball. You know, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, phenomenal. She can pass, great IQ, can shoot, which is great. I mean, if you go back to what we talked about before, mm-hmm. adding three-point shooting is, is going to be great. Yeah. Um, Becky, long, athletic, can rebound, can bang in the post. Um, great player. I'm excited to see her uh, in our program. Hannah, I mean, she's just a dog from top to bottom. She's going to pick you up full court. You're going to feel her energy and her intensity the whole game. Uh, She plays with great pace and is just, you know, like you're going to feel her presence the entire time that she's out there. Um, And then you got Maddie, Sonia, Cass. Oh, I missed Anna DeWolf. Um, Experienced. High IQ grad transfer, good mate, good mid range, can really shoot the ball well. Vocal leader, absolutely love her. Uh, can't say an, good, mm-hmm. enough good things about her. Um, and then yeah, Maddie stepping into a really big leadership role. Um, I think that's someone that you you mentioned before. You lose a little leadership. I think that's someone that's really going to step up in that area. Um, Sonia again, leading by example, but I just am so excited for her this year because it's like, all right, she got the first two years under her belt. Like she's an upperclassman. Um, and now with that point guard duty from last year, she can take all of that into this year. Um, and I'm really excited for her. Kylie, just high motor. Uh, she's going to run the floor really, really well. She's going to seal. She's going to post. Her presence is always going to be known. Um, really excited for her. I think, I think with all these pieces, like you have such, such a talented group and Niel does a great job of meshing that talent. You know, she knows, she knows what it takes to gel with new pieces. She knows the offense, offense and defenses, depending on who's on the court and who's not. Um, so I'm going to give a lot of credit to Niel in that area in a sense where she knows what to do with new pieces. Um, player development is huge at Notre Dame and they know like, okay, here's, here's what you need to work on. And here's where you can really excel in our offense and defense. And Mm -hmm. with great coaches, like there's no doubt that that's going to be executed like to perfection. What else? Let me think. Let me ask you this while you're on, do you think Hannah will start? Um, yeah, if I had to guess, um, if you think about it, I mean, she's just been dominant, yeah. uh, she, you know, and then like Olivia's out and she's yeah. our, she's a true one. Uh, if you look at the others, like Anna, Anna swung back and forth from the one and the two at Fordham mm-hmm. and Hannah is just, I mean, a great player from top to bottom. She, she scores, she shoots. She plays defense, she passes, and she just has an unbelievable competitive mindset for the game. Like yeah. uh, Niel doesn't Niel doesn't make this comparison ever, but she said, and I think a couple weeks ago that Hannah reminds her of Skyler, and I mean, like that's just enough said right there. Like you get. She a said that to me. That. She said that to you. 
Yeah, she said that to me. Yeah, unbelievable, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I think, I think in a sense where, if you look at last year in some of those, probably most of those games that we lost, we had a high number of turnovers. So I think that that's one thing that, given all the ball handlers that you have and the style of play that Notre Dame plays with, sometimes you have to give and take with those turnovers. Some turnovers mm-hmm. are going to be coming from just what you're, you are you know to do in the offense. You want to push pace. You want to throw that thing off the court. You want to dribble and attack. You're going to kind of have to live with a few aggressive turnovers, you yeah. know? But I think something that they need to work on is just try to limit those within the amount of ball handlers that you have and the pace of the game that Notre Dame women's basketball wants to play with. Yeah. Yeah. So I, when she said it, like, so I'm used to the way that the football coaches talk about freshmen. That's what I'm used to. You right. would never like have like the best example, like recently, in my opinion, is when Kyle Hamilton was on campus and he like, right when he showed up, he was just like intercepting passes all over the place. And, and they would ask Brian Kelly about him and, He'd be like, ah, you know, I guess he was good or whatever. Like, you wouldn't hear him be like, oh, he's like Harrison Smith. You know, like, he, you no. wouldn't hear that. Yeah, that's just, and, I mean, that's how special you can tell she's going yeah. to be, you know? Like, if, yeah. if Niel sees that in her right now and she's a freshman, imagine the things that she's going to do at Notre Dame. Yeah. So that's not normal, is what I'm saying. Like, normally you wouldn't have a freshman come in and be like, she's like one of the best players who's ever come through here. I mean... I would say I would say the comparison to Skylar is more unique because it's like I don't think there's another Skylar Diggins, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. because and I think it's just what she's really getting at is like that just competitive dog mindset. Yeah. You know, and when you see that in a freshman, like you see your freshman going to pick someone up full court like voluntarily, <laughs> I mean that's a coach's dream, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to be. How hard is it in um, in the game of basketball to incorporate young players like that? Like what? So I, I put in I put in the outline the barriers to entry, and when I put it, I was like, she may not understand what I mean. But so what I mean by that is like how what it, what is the baseline of what you need to do? Because you you talked about you you just talked about like living with turnovers and kind of living with mistakes, right? But like right. what what is the uh, what is the balance there? Like, how hard is it? Because I know, again, I, I make a lot of comparisons to football because it's, it's, I know what the barriers are in football. Like, when your coaches, when they don't trust you in football, it doesn't matter kind of how good you are, really. It's like they're mm-hmm. not going to put you out there. But yeah. it's it, so in basketball, is it the same way? Like, are, is, is it easier in, in a free flowing game like basketball is to get onto the court um, when there's so many possessions? Um, and what does that say for, I mean, obviously Hannah, like you've kind of made it clear. Like if you think she's going to start, she's obviously going to play a ton, but what does that say for someone like Emma Rich? Like, is it enough that she is such a good shooter or is it like, there are other things that you have to do first before the the upside of the shooting allows you to get onto the court? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a ton of things like that, that you could put into it. But I would say like, when I look back at freshmen that that have stood out like take kk bransford for example last year she has a high iq and she just she came in the game and impacted it every time you know yeah so it's like she she knew the plays I think that's that's big thing for freshmen is knowing the playbook because then you can avoid some of those freshman mistakes of like being new, you know? Mm, so mm. like if you're not in the right spot. I would say being like a student of the game as a freshman is huge. It's huge. Like it's you're already in a new environment. You have to make so many adjustments. So I would say if you're a student of the game, that helps. Um, and then, I mean – are you going to come in? Like they recruited you for a reason, you know, yeah. like, they recruit different pieces. So like if you can come in, do your job and do it well and play your role, no matter what that is, like that could be, it could be getting someone a break 
hitting a three and taking a charge. If you, mm -hmm. if you can consistently prove that you're going to come in and do your job and your coaches can rely on you and trust in you, then you have a chance of getting minutes, you know, but some freshman year sometimes is hard because sometimes it feels like this, but if yeah. you can always play like this and, and be able to tell your coaches, like by example, in your actions, okay, you always know what you're going to get out of me. Yeah. You know, are you going to come in and you're going to play, play your ass off, pick up full court and just, and just do what you do. Then I think that that's where you can separate yourself as a freshman. Because if you look at the most common thing with freshmen, it might be like freshman mistakes, um, fatigue, maybe not being, being used to the pace of the college game. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I think, I think those are the couple of things that stand out to me when I think of freshmen getting playing time. Well, like you. Yeah. I like knew, what was, what yeah. was your deal? Yeah. What was your thing? Like when um, I came in, it's like, I, I need to be on this or what, what, what ultimately earned you the starting job? Um, I worked really hard. Uh, they knew like when they recruited me, like I was a hard worker. You yeah. know, um, I came in, I did what I was told, you know, like yeah. I, I, in the, in the middle of like trying to adjust and be a freshman point guard, like I was a student of the game. Therefore, like I knew what to do when I was told to do it, if that makes sense. Um, I went like above and beyond to understand what the coaches wanted out of me on the offensive and defensive end. Um, I was always in the gym. Um, the, everyone around me could confidently say if I took a three, it was going to go in, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then I kind of just like played with confidence. Like as a freshman, you can't, you can't play like a freshman, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, because I mean, when you are experienced in basketball, sometimes people people will walk out there and you could be like, they're a freshman, you know, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you like I did what I could to like not think of that. So like the way I played was like I wanted to play with like a veteran's mindset, um, a, a veteran's competitive level, um, that kind of thing. So I, I just came in, I was a student of the game, I tried my best. I was a freshman leader without like stepping on toes or crossing line crossing the line for like yeah those those fifth year leaders i mean i played with someone um reagan mcgarity at virginia tech she was phenomenal and she was the team's leader and i was able to also be a leader as a point guard but mm -hmm. learn from her like yeah. i was a sponge i wanted to learn everything and i was open to everything and that really really helped me freshman year because freshman year when some freshmen are like i just want to play you know, yeah. and it's like, but do you want to do what it takes to play? And as a yeah. freshman, I did what it took to stay out there. Well, I think as a point guard as well, like your your mindset also has to be like you're running the show. Like it's kind of like being quarterback, right? Like whether you're captain or not, you're running things, you know. So like yeah. you you have to you have to have that mindset. So for you, I think um that definitely helps. And it sounds like everything what you're saying. And everything that Neil said to me is like Hannah has the mindset, and that's what you guys are kind of noticing. Like, oh, she, yeah. not just the fact that she's good, but the fact that she has that competitive um, mindset is obviously going to help her very much. How, at, how, how does the team uh, going into any year, as we get kind of into like what your expectations are for this team? How do you, how do you start to say like, okay, these are our goals? And how do you focus on your goals? Because it basketball is different in that you have a regular season championship, you have a t conference tournament championship, and then you have the the NCAA tournament, right? So there's so many goals that you can reach. How does the team itself go about setting goals and keeping an eye on goals while also understanding like it's a long year, right? You're going to play 30 right. plus games. So how how does that how does that process work? So in the beginning of each year we'll have like a team meeting um, and we'll write out our goals okay. um, as a team. Okay. And then there's a separate, separate part of the meeting where you write your personal goals. Like Neil will usually give us like a notebook or a journal in the beginning of every single year. Um, and 
any Notre Dame women's basketball team is going to have the national championship as their end goal. It's going to have ACC championship regular season. Um, and you also have to understand, which we did a good job of is taking it one game at a time. Like women's basketball, especially in the ACC is so competitive top to bottom that you cannot, you have to be present every time you can't overlook any opponent, nobody. Um, so we did a really good job of that. And I think how you do that is, is bringing all the non-negotiables because if you, if you bring the non-negotiables, like I'm going to be super locked in and focused, I'm going to talk the whole time, uh, and I'm going to execute and know the scout. A lot of those make up for the other errors that you just might naturally run into, like over the course of a long basketball season, like fatigue, injury, that kind of thing, adversity, anything. Um, So I think remaining consistent because I didn't mention this, but we also make a list of like um, non-negotiables within those goals because you can write down the goals, but it's also like, how are you going to do it? Right. It's a good job of what like Neil, Neil and uh, did with us, not only like as a team, but also like we would have player development meetings. So there's a lot of, a lot of things that go into making those goals. Cause like I said before, like, you can make those goals and put it on the board, but what do you individually have to do for your team collectively to achieve that goal? That yeah. That is realistic to maintain throughout a whole season. It can't be – like you can have a personal goal of shooting above 45%, but like collectively for a team, it could be I'm going to take good, efficient three-point shots every night, that kind of thing. So I've – Role in basketball seems so important. And I think that that you just kind of touched on that. Like, like not just, I want to shoot well, but like, where am I even getting my shots from? Right? Like, this is where, like, this is how I need to, this is where I need to get on the court. This is how I'm going to get to the court. Like, this is how I'm going to affect the team on a possession to possession basis. Like I've, I've seen so many times where, you know, I, I, I'm a big Laker guy, right? So you like follow the Lakers and it's just like, why is this team, the pieces aren't clicking? It's because there's role confusion. They just don't, they don't know where their minutes are coming from. They don't know where they're going to be playing their role on a night to night basis. And so you're kind of touching on that when you talk about like player development meetings and writing down to the specifics of what they want to do um, on a night to night basis and what their role is. So I think that's like really important. It's like really smart that you guys do that. Um, and it's just kind of like a like an indication of like that's what a strong program does. Like little things like down yeah. to my new minute details. Um so I wanted to ask about like because it's it's difficult, like with the football team, right? Like or any football team, it, it's you have the end of year, right? Like you want to get to the playoffs or you want to get to the national championship game or whatever it is. And it's like, but if if that ends, like what do you do then? You're right. So like how do you plan out? Um, so that's what makes college basketball different. Yeah. Um, so, so as we get into just kind of like, we're, we're going to, we'll do kind of more in-depth preview things. Season starts of like the first regular season games, November 6th. We're going to do some more in-depth, uh, preview things. We'll talk about like the guards. We'll talk about the forwards and centers and that sort of thing. And you'll, I think you're around the team. So you'll be able to see how they're kind of progressing. There's going to be an exhibition game, um, in the lead up as well. Uh, but just kind of like how how big are your expectations for the team in 2023-2024? Huge. Um, I mean, I think they're obviously national championship caliber. They have so many different weapons, which is great. Um, yeah. Like you have you have true centers like Kylie. I mean, great player. And then you have uh, more versatile weapons like Maddie. You could throw her inside out. Even Cass, you could throw her inside and out. Um, I think that once they get all those pieces to come together nicely and they can gel um, on the court, like, amazing. Obviously, I mean, you have – I say that because you have big roles being filled with different people, you know? So, like, Hannah, new point guard. Um, But once they – once they can figure out how all that – all that talent can mesh. I mean, it just comes with more practice, like an experience and 
yeah. any other team that has new pieces, you know, goes through the same thing. But I have very high expectations for them. Um, I think three point shooting is going to go up. Um, just looking at the new pieces that we added, um, and it, like in terms of postseason, like the adjustments that we had to make, um, and yeah. I think just picking up full court more, being more scrappy on defense. Um, I think that that's something that we'll see a lot out of them this year. Um, and then at the end of the day, just playing the way that Neil wants us to play. Um, and that's fast pace, transition points, um, having having great percentages on offense and defense to get that, that good balance, um, and just utilizing all the offensive weapons nicely. Yeah. Um, well, look, the, the vibes, uh, as they say, are immaculate uh, regarding the team yeah. right now. And it's yeah. going to be very um, it's going to be a very exciting to to watch them and cover them. And Irish Sports Daily is going to be there all year with Dara Mabry. Uh, Dimes with Dara. This was awesome. I had a good time. I'm very excited. I'm very excited to, to, to go through this uh, this year. I think it's going to be great. Um, the show is called The Joy Slot. You're going to want to check it out. Uh, subscribe to the show. Like the show. Comment. Leave Dara comments. Do you like yeah, what she said? Comment. Yeah, leave comments uh, and all that stuff. So uh, thanks, Dara. We'll be back. Uh, we'll, we'll try to make this weekly um, as schedules get worked out and everything, um, and then we'll get we'll get a, we'll get a nice rhythm as the season starts and games and everything. So um, thank you everyone for tuning in. This is our first show. It was very fun. Uh, we'll be back very soon talking more about the uh, the women's basketball team. We'll dive into the men's basketball team as well. So uh, have a good one, everyone, and we'll talk to you next time.